So what I'm going to be doing today is um, doing some hyperlapses, maybe trying some of those new smart features from the latest firmware update. And this video is dedicated to all the Mavic 3 haters out there saying, oh, I'll just buy a uh, Mavic Air 2S, blah, blah, blah. The Mavic 3 is so expensive. It's not ready yet. The Mavic 3 is a great, great, beautiful, outstanding drone. I've had some learnings as well while using it. And uh, there are some, I wouldn't say flaws, just a learning curve with it. And I'm gonna explain all that in this video today. It is December for my subscribers that are New York based or in the Northeast and is familiar with Jones Beach. Um, we are at Jones Beach um, and it, the wind today is about 35 miles per hour at 100 feet and we're going to be flying the Mavic 3. It is raining quite a bit on and off so we're going to see if we can get this video in uh, but today we're going to be testing out the hyperlapse feature of the Mavic 3. I already did a hyperlapse as the sun was um, rising during sunrise. And I can tell you that the drone was almost sideways with this wind. And I don't know if you can hear it um, right now, the wind, but it is, it's windy. And um, the hyperlapse that I got today, just from the sunrise was amazing. Once I reviewed the in body, let me roll that really quick. All right, so today in this video, we're gonna be flying the Mavic 3 in high winds. Right now, I'm hoping that the camera is focusing. This is the One DX, the Focus King. But if you can see here at 100 feet, we are at 21 miles per hour with gust of 33 miles per hour at 250 feet, which is probably where we're gonna be between 100 and 250. At 250, we are at 24 miles per hour gusting at 36. All right, so it is nine in the morning and we're finally able to fly because the weather has cleared up. And right now I am currently doing a hyperlapse. Um, this is a hyperlapse that's happening right now. Three seconds intervals going at two miles per hour. Headed over to that tower again. The winds are still the same. I wanna say the winds are about 20 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour, maybe gusting to like 35. It is holding steady, um, nothing has changed. One thing that I do want to point out, look, while wow, this just happened to me now, I'm not sure if you get to see this on the camera or not. You see that right there? Aircraft not connected to RC. That's something that keeps randomly happening, randomly happening to my, to my uh, Mavic 3. There you go, so now it's coming home. So you see the drone is coming home now. And um, the drone is coming home and it killed my hyperlapse. It literally killed my hyperlapse because it killed my hyperlapse because it's disconnecting from the air, from the drone for some reason.
here you have it again guys here it is again so this is a pain in the ass to say the least it is consistently disconnecting um the rc is disconnecting from the aircraft leaving me with no clue as to where my drone is there you go now it's coming back home again um and i'm literally at 800 feet like it's this is literally 800 feet away and for some reason i just keep getting disconnected um i don't know why that's happening but it's something that dji needs to definitely fix um, however once it connects again just the image is just absolutely beautiful um, but it this needs to be fixed at the end of the day there's nothing i can say so that's one of the opportunities of the mavic 3 that i was mentioning um, right they, i'm going to mention some of the learnings that i've had and some of the opportunities this is definitely one of them here the fact that the rc d randomly disconnects from the mavic 3 it, it can literally be sitting right by your feet um like 50 feet away from you and it'll just disconnect let's get some um videos here going and then we'll return back with a fresh battery with a hyperlapse So I installed a fresh new battery. We're gonna attempt to do this hyperlapse again. The sky is just so moody right now with the clouds and the wind is definitely still blowing. So again, the point of this video today is I wanna show you the stability of a hyperlapse on the Mavic 3 and just go over some learnings that I've had with this drone so far. So let's get to the learnings while we conduct this hyperlapse. I have about seven minutes to ramble with you. Learning number one is what you just saw, the RC disconnecting. That is a terrible um, fix, a terrible bug that DJI needs to fix and resolve immediately. There are several guys online that it is, that is experiencing the same issue. And if you call DJI and let them know about this bug, guess what they're gonna recommend? They're gonna recommend that you take this drone, you pack it up and you send it back to them and they're gonna send you a refurbished. After I paid five grand for a Mavic 3 Cine, I do not want a refurbished drone so one of the things that i am considering is i bought this from best buy and because we are on a holiday plan i might look to exchange it um to see if that will solve for this problem however i know several of my guys friends that have the mavic 3 as well they are also facing this issue um so i don't know if it's just you know all mavic 3s that are facing this problem or is just something you know due to bad a bad batch bad quality assurance but dji needs to solve for this um another big opportunity is the d log so if you saw my mavic um three night footage and i'll link it here um so you can see that footage if you haven't if you um if you saw my mavic three night footage extended into sunrise in the night scenes, I shot in regular um, color profile, not log or anything like that. However, when we transitioned to, to the day, I did switch over to log and I was following the histogram in my EV comp. So I made sure that I wasn't blowing out my highlights, um, make sure that I just kept the eye on the, sh on the shadows and that my EV comp was one, right? So typically on a camera, you want to shoot in a uh, log profile and you want to be overexposed at least by one stop. However, with the Mavic 3, when I sat down on my computer and I tried to bring back that log to Rec. 709, holy crap is that thing flat. The log profile that comes out of this drone, it is absolutely flat. And if you are overexposed, um, slightly, if you're overexposed by one stop, guess what? You're going to have a tremendous hard time difficult time bringing that back to rec 709 colors which is you know what we're really used to 
Um, so that was an opportunity for me, uh, a learning for me. Um, and going forward today, we're gonna give, go ahead and try a little log as well, right, when we fly over the beach, but I'm gonna keep it at zero. I'm not gonna overexpose, and I'll attempt to use um, original Dobo's LUT as well, and to bring that back to Rec. 709. Um, but so far, those are the only two negative things that I have for the drone, is that, you know, one, they need to fix the, the disconnect issue, two, they need to, um, really come up with a preview lot for the for the mavic 3 so that way we when we're shooting in log we can actually see what we're shooting um but my i'm getting very close to the tower here and i see some birds heading my way uh i guess coming out from the tower because they're seeing the drone approach so let me just end this right here and uh show you the hyperlapse show you the hyperlapse once i edit it and um and import it into this video. And we'll come back for more additional thoughts. As we work this hyperlapse here, um, two things that I'm noticing is the horizon is definitely, well, here the horizon is centered, um, leveled, I should say, but earlier the horizon was not leveled. And um, another thing is that I selected circle from my hyperlapse and I tracked the lighthouse or that, you know, that middle center point there, that building that you see there. And look where it's at now it's far off from that building. So it definitely has some opportunity there to, to track appropriately. One benefit of the Mavic 3 has definitely been the batteries. As you saw, we just finished that one hyperlapse, right? Just going straight through. I had about 150 shots. Um, and with this high wind, you would expect that the drone is probably fighting it and drawing more power, right, to the motors. Um, but look at my battery here now. You probably can or cannot see, I don't know, depending as if my camera is focusing, but I have 78% battery left, which gives me another 31 minutes. It is currently about 40 degrees. And again, the winds are 25 miles per hour. So as you can see, battery is not an issue. I can easily get a combination of video and hyperlapses or just multiple hyperlapses on one battery. If I had the Mavic 2, this is probably this battery would have probably been done just with that one hyperlapse again considering the cold temperature and the current wind so i am really excited and really happy about the battery especially with the design with the mavic 2 i was flying with zip ties around my batteries because we all know it the mavic 2 batteries they tend to swell they tend to puff up and a few of my friends have lost their mavic 2s unfortunately because of that um that battery popping out and now with the mavic 3 we have that design where the battery is going inside of the drone which to me is more safe and a, a well a, a a great design we had the phantom fours originally had that design i know the mavic mini had the battery inside um mavic air air 2 and air 2s hasn't had a battery swelling problem that i'm i'm familiar with that i'm aware of but i'm just happy overall that they went back with that design and having the battery inside so now is the time that I'm going to go ahead and take the drone back up in the air and I'm going to shoot both in log, D-log. By the way, all the video today has been completely ProRes, but we're going to go and shoot now in D-log and I'm going to show you what it looks flat and I'm going to show you my version of, uh, of a color graded 
um, footage once I take that D-log and try to convert it back to Rec 709. Um, additionally, I'm gonna show you a standard color profile as well. And again, all in ProRes, and I'm shooting, by the way, at 5K, 30 frames a second. When I'm shooting in log today, I am also shooting at an EV comp of zero. So I am not overexposing by one stop. I'm looking at my histogram, it's set right in the middle, and I'm gonna hopefully in post take that you know footage and from the middle of the histogram of the waveforms and just expand it, right? Push out those colors, the shadows and the highlights. Um, so my EV comp today will remain at exactly zero or sometimes even half a stop under, but I'm not going to overexpose. That's a learning that I want to take back for myself and see what I get better results by not overexposing. All right, the Mavic 3 is a drone that I am not ready to hand catch because of those sensors that it has. It actually will pull away from you as you go for it. And the last thing I wanna do is um, slice up my fingers with these propellers. So until I am able to figure it out, <laughs> the Mavic 3 will always in my books, land, land on the ground. That's the best way of, um, of bringing your quad, your quadcopter safely is by landing it in the ground because these sensors work phenomenal. And um, as you go try to grab her from underneath, she will fight you and push away. So, I haven't figured that one out yet, but that's coming soon. So flying the Mavic 3 for me so far has been an absolutely positive journey besides the issues that I'm facing. I mean, even the camera bag, I still have the tags on it, <laughs> but even the camera bag, I know there was some complaining online about that it's just another bag. This is not just another bag. This is a quality bag. Um, and it's easy and compact for you to carry your accessories dedicated to your Mavic 3. But um, let's go back to my initial thoughts. Flying the Mavic 3 has been such a phenomenal experience. The drone just handles different. Its ability to maneuver in the air is more agile, more aggressive, more responsive. It's more cinematic. It's all the things that I was looking for on a drone. Will this replace my Inspire 2? The answer is no. However, will this replace the Mavic 2 Pro? Absolutely. I, in fact, I already sold the Mavic 2 Pro. This um, Mavic 3 is a game changer. The 5K quality, the ProRes, if you have a Cine version, is a great add-on, especially if you're gonna be selling footage. Um, it's something that, you know, the professionals really love. It's a codec that's really wanted out there um, for the indie filmmakers. So, you know, I'm ever, overall very happy that I got it. I hope that they do resolve the issues that I mentioned, um, disconnecting from the aircraft, the horizon tilt issue, um, all that stuff needs to get resolved and as well as improved capabilities on that zoom camera because right now that zoom camera is kind of useless. You know, I would love to use it just for some quick B-roll compression shots of a subject, but right now it's really unstable. I am confident, however, that DJI is going to surprise us January, February with yet another firmware update that's going to really unleash the capabilities of the Mavic 3.
So that's it for today here at Jones Beach. It is quite cold. I'm happy that the rain eventually stopped. One thing that I definitely do want to do is go back out there and shoot some low light again of the city and really put the cameras to its test because I think that's where we're going to see the best value in the Mavic 3 is leveraging that micro four thirds sensor and that increase high ISO with low noise and uh, getting those low um, low light shots around the city. So. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the footage. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment below, and I'll definitely get back to you on any questions or comments you may have. Until next time, peace.